uh, very good afternoon so today uh, we are going to discuss about the a different types of viscometer which is used to measure the viscosity of the fluid so today's topic is a different type of viscometers so mainly uh, there are five different uh, types of viscometer which we generally use to measure the viscosity of the oil and that first one is uh, Cocte Adstack Viscometer, second one Seibold Universal Viscometer, third one Flowers Viscometer, fourth one Michael Viscometer, and the fifth one is Ostrol Viscometer. So these are the five important uh, types of viscometers which we generally used. So in the examination, uh, definitely we are going to get a one question on this. Explain a uh, different types of viscometer or explain any one or two important types of viscometer or they may ask particularly about the Seibold, Flowers, Michael or Ostrol viscometer. So and that first one is Flowers viscometer. Okay. So what is meant by Flowers viscometer? So this is the typical diagram of the Flowers viscometer. The first type of viscometer. Viscometer means it is a device which is used to measure the viscosity of the oil or fluid it is called viscometer okay in that first one and it is a simple one it is called flowers viscometer it is a belongs to so called secondary viscometer it is belongs to so called secondary viscometer means we cannot measure viscosity directly we cannot measure viscosity directly First, we have to measure some parameters and those parameters we are going to convert to viscosity. That's why it is called as a secondary viscometer. It is belongs to so-called secondary viscometer. Means the absolute viscosity of the liquid cannot be directly derived from the measurement. So, that's why it is secondary viscometer. And come to the construction of this viscometer, it consists of a glass tube that is what this is called as a, a glass tube with a small ball here it is an, a small ball which is placed here a small ball considerably smaller than inner diameter of glass tube and it is placed or positioned at a known angle the angle is 15 degree known angle to the horizontal the ball which is initially at the left and the ball which is initially at the left end of the tube it is released and starts to roll down the tube here we release the ball so that once we release it will start uh, flowing down the time required to travel a definite distance along the tube indicates the viscosity of the liquid means here in the glass tube we placed we placed some of the liquid okay so in the uh, it's having an outer diameter inner diameter on inner diameter we placed a fluid okay one end we placed a ball and other end there is a rubber at electric contact and entire system is placed at a 15 degree Okay, and here we just unrelease the ball. The ball is having some mass so that it starts flowing. So it starts flowing through the fluid and it should reach the other end. That is what electric contact. Okay, so how much time is required to travel from one end to another end? That traveling time is indirectly proportional to the viscosity. If the viscosity of the oil is more, okay, so it will take more time to travel. If the viscosity is less, it will take less time to travel. Okay, so how much time is required, and that time is going to convert to viscosity by using some equations. The test of the liquid under high pressure, the tube must be made up of alloy of steel instead of glass, and specially electric signals device used, and it is suits for low viscosity. Means 
here if the if the high pressure oil is used then we should made this entire flower viscometer with the help of alloy steel not by the glass tube so glass tube is used only low pressure liquids and also this type of device is used when the low viscosity of the liquid test so it is a first type of uh, viscometer and the second type of viscometer is it is called michael viscometer it is called so called michael viscometer okay so this is what the entire setup yes you can see so this is a, a setup michael viscometer and it is called by it is also called by inverter or workshop viscometer it is also called as inverter or workshop viscometer inverter means the entire setup is going to reverse that's why it is called as the inverter and workshop viscometer means it is gen commonly used in the workshops to measure the viscosity that's why it is called as a, a workshop viscometer the main advantage of this viscometer is a few drops of oil required for the test only few drop one or two or three drops of oil is required to test the viscosity when compared to the previous one here only few drop of oil is required to measure the viscosity that is the main advantage here we are not going to waste the oil it comes to the construction it consists essentially of <coughs> one inch stainless steel ball so this is a one inch stainless steel ball and a spherical cup this is called as a spherical cup this p is called as a spherical cup a is a stainless steel ball having a same radius as the ball uh, this okay a spherical cup having a same radius as the ball a uh, three small projections uh, spaced of 120 degree on the spherical surface of the cup maintain a minimum clearance between the ball and the cup surface so these are the three uh, grooves which are 120 degree each this clearance is approximately 0 0.01 mm the halo handle this is halo handle d it is called as a halo handle d of non conducting material it is a non conducting material it is connected to the cup the thermometer c this is called as a thermometer c is inserted into the handle for measuring the temperature of the cup so to determine the viscosity of the oil a small sample of oil is to be tested is placed in the cup the ball is placed in the cup the instrument is held with a <coughs> upward direction okay this entire instrument is in upward direction reverse first it is uh, this is spherical cup into the top top side okay in the upper side then we place the some few drops of oil whose viscosity is to be measured then we place the spherical ball that a is a stainless steel ball is placed on the cup pressing must of oil into the a small circumferential grooves if you place that uh, ball onto the cup so that will press the oil and the oil start moving into the small grooves these are the grooves so that only a thin layer or on a about 0 0.01 mm thick uh, fills the space between the ball and the cup then the whole instrument is inverted and held vertically with the ball at the lower end of the viscometer in the position shown in the figure means after placing the ball the entire instrument should be reverse that's why it is called as a inverter just like a, a shown in the figure this position the ball is suspended for a small some period of time by the negative pressure developed in the oil film 
between the ball and the cup due to the negative pressure in the film the oil is gradually sucked from the glue into the space between the ball and the cup so that the thickness of the film increases gradually when the layer of the oil between the cup and the ball becomes so thick that it can no longer maintain the negative pressure sufficient for supporting the weight of the ball the ball separates from the cup and fall down the time required for a process is proportional to the absolute viscosity of the oil okay how much time is taken or how much time is suspended into the glue that time is directly proportional to the absolute viscosity of the oil the instrument must be calibrated by using some liquid to to known viscosity in order to establish the constant of proportionality between the absolute viscosity of the tested liquid and the number of second determined by the stopwatch and this is based on Huygens Poisule law that i will explain in the later so you just know how how to handle the this uh, viscometer first separate first uh, should make this instrument reverse means this spherical cup should be in the upward direction then place some few drops of oil and place this ball onto the brew so onto the that cup so that that will squeeze the oil and it will flow some liquid into the grooves then invert this entire system okay and uh, it will create the negative pressure that will suspend the ball okay once the between these two there is a creates the film that film is so thick so that it could not able to sustain the ball negative pressure then it will separate the ball and that ball will fall down so how much time is suspended in this cup that will directly proportional to the absolute viscosity of the liquid the thermometer is used to maintain the pressure uh, sorry temperature so this is the second type of viscometer called michael viscometer it is also called inverter or workshop viscometer so next one it is called oswald viscometer <clears throat> it is widely used in laboratory works so it is for used in the kinematic viscosity it is not used for the absolute viscosity it is used for the kinematic viscosity so kinematic viscosity we already know that it's a absolute or dynamic viscosity by density so it gives the kinematic viscosity so here by using some of the liquid of known viscosity and density uh, like a uh, distilled water okay sewer solution just to calibrate this instrument before going to conduct the test okay <clears throat> here uh, it consists of an a b c are the three uh, reservoirs where the oil should flow from a uh, tank to b b to c and i think is collected and these uh, C to B is collect, uh, connected with the help of capillary tube. It is called as a capillary tube. And the entire system is immersed in the water bath just to maintain the temperature. The entire system is immersed in the water bath. Uh, <clears throat> the energy required to accelerate the fluid at the entrance of the capillary must be negligible as small when compared to the energy consumed by uh, viscous friction in the capillary so make diameter of the capillary very small and the length is 15 times larger than the diameter that's why it is called as a capillary the length is 15 times 50 times the diameter error uh, may be occurred due to the turbulent motion when the flow in the capillary is not laminar a change pressure at the inlet and outlet of the capillary due to the 
due to the falling level of the liquid in the reservoir B and rising level in the reservoir C is also fact that the results of the instrument. Okay, so that we have to assume that. So here first we have to fill the liquid into the reservoir A. Okay, and once the fluid touches this mark one, okay, so and this mark two, this is the mark two, mark one. We should uh, know how much time is taken from a liquid flowing from mark one to mark two through the capillary. How much time is taken? That time is directly proportional to the viscosity, dynamic viscosity of the liquid. Okay, that fluid has to flow through the capillary from mark one. First, start the stopwatch when the liquid reaches the level mark one. And once it reaches the mark two, stop the stopwatch. So measure how much time is taken to flow from one to two. And it is an, uh, reservoir three is for collecting the fluid. So next type of viscometers are called Seibold viscometer. This is called as a Seibold viscometer. Uh, so from using this viscometer, we we will find the viscosity of universal Seibold universal viscosity. We are not directly getting the absolute or kinematic. We got the Seibold viscosity of the liquid. The Seibold this is stands standard method of measuring viscosity. Uh, this is a one of the standard method of measuring the viscosity. To make the viscosity test, the oil to be tested is brought approximately to the required temperature in the separate vessel and it is poured into the cup one until it reaches the rim of the cup. You can see here, this is what the testing fluid is. Okay, this entire thing is water bath. Okay, so water bath and this is a cup. Here we placed. It is also called as a gallery. Okay, through the gallery we place the oil, and this water bath, and these are the gas burners which maintain the temperature, so that it will maintain also the temperature of the fluid throughout this cup. Okay, and this is a five outlet tube, and this is a receiving flask, sixty centimeter cube, and sixth one is a. This is called as a plugger. This is a plugger. Okay. Just plug it so that it won't flow the fluid. Okay, and fill entire this fluid in the this cup. Now the water bath three must be brought to the exact prescribed temperature by means of a ring gas burner or by the electric heater. The flow through the outlet tube five is collected. It is a jet starts when. Cock, that is a plugger six is removed. The time is uh, in seconds required to fill the receiving flask up to sixty centimeter cube. Graduation mark is measures the viscosity of the oil, and it is <coughs> re uh, re connoted as Seibold universal viscometer. Yes, you we we have some. Uh, standards which we measure this uh, SUV into the absolute viscosity. That is by using Z is equal to rho T into 0.22 S minus 180 by S. It's a one equation. By using this equation, we convert the Seibold universal viscosity into the absolute viscosity. Where Z is a absolute viscosity, S is a Seibold universal viscosity. Rho T, specific gravity, so how it is working means, first we pour the oil into this cup, then it is already plugged, so once you remove this plugger, the fluid starts flowing through this nozzle 
and start collecting in the flask, receiving flask, that is 60 centimeter cube. So, how much time is taken to fill this mark, graduation mark on the flask? So, that time you have to note down. The time by using that, okay, you have to you measure the Thibault universal visco viscosity, then that into the absolute viscosity by using the equation. This is the standard equation. Z is equal to rho t into 0.225 minus 180 by S, uh, where S is the cyborg universal viscosity. Next, Z is absolute viscosity, rho is the specific gravity. Okay. So, next type of viscometer, it is called Cocktail Archeck Viscometer. I think you already studied this type of uh, <coughs> viscometer in your design lab. So, it is a essentially a consists of two cylinders. A which is attached to the table <coughs> and B which is attached to the uh, wire. Okay. And this B again in turn suspended by are supported by two cylinders, small cylinders G and H. And a torsional wire, this is called as a torsional wire, which suspends <coughs> these small cylinders G, D, H, and a table which consists of cylinder A. The gap between cylinder A and B is completely filled by oil. The oil which viscosity is we are going to measure. When the outer cylinder rotates, the motion in the liquid between the two cylinders it starts and sometime because of viscosity the liquid in the inner cylinder starts rotating. The tangential force which equal to the shear stress on the surface of the cylinder <coughs> determines the torque that tends to rotate the inner cylinder and that twists the wire on which this cylinder is suspended. The angular displacement of inner cylinder is measured by deflection of a beam with a light reflected from the mirror the small f. This is a mirror small f connected to the wire above the cylinder. The wire is calibrated so that the torque which is proportional to the shear stress in the liquid may be measured two short cylinders G and H above and below the cylinder B are used in order to prevent the disturbance of the laminar motion in the liquid so that it will avoid the frictional resistance. So this is how we are going to measure the viscosity. It will be very simple. A one uh, on the table cylinder A, A is placed and on the torsional wire. This is a torsional wire which is having a mirror where the deflection is uh, no, here. Deflection we can measure here with the help of this mirror. And this wire, the torsional wire, consists of an H, B, and G, a small cylinders. Once the gap is filled by a liquid whose viscosity we are going to find out, starts the table to rotate. Once the table is rotated, this cylinder A is also start rotate. And this cylinder rotate means the fluid which is filled, it is also slowly starts rotating and that will create the tangential force that means the shear stress <coughs> present in the fluid film will create the tangential force on the cylinder D, G, H on that it will create the tangential force and that force will deflect or rotate the small cylinder B once the small cylinder rotates it will 
uh, it will deflect the torsional wire means it is also rotates the torsional wire and the deflection is uh, we can see in the mirror yeah and the deflection is directly proportional to the shear stress sorry uh, shear stress that, that is what the viscosity of the liquid if more the viscosity more will be the shear stress more the frictional force and more the deflection if less viscosity less deflection this is how we are going to measure the viscosity of the liquid okay so these are the five important types of viscometers one is <coughs> lowers viscometer we discussed michael viscometer we discussed ostrol viscometer seibold universal viscometer popter axter viscometer okay